get ready for excitement because this is the Ram Promaster City. My guess is you're not looking at the Promaster for looks or style points. I mean, take a look at it. This front and rear bumper, they're not even body matched or painted, which means you could take it to a parking lot and just nail a shopping cart and not have to worry about bumper replacements. With that said, the Promaster City is about one thing, affordable hauling and transportation. And as we take a look at it further, you're gonna see exactly why. How you doing today? Uh, when I found out we're gonna be doing our first Fiat Chrysler vehicle, FCA, I talked to Scott about it immediately. I'm like, I wanted to know what he wanted to look at. And I thought for certain he was gonna say Viper, Hellcat, but he surprised me. What did you wanna look at? The Viper. No, <laughs> you told me plain and clear he wanted to see the Promaster City. <laughs> And here it is. I can't, I, it's, I'm glad I came in on my day off to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think so far? It's pretty amazing. Where is this vehicle manufactured? Turkey. Okay. With a Vin Z. Yes, you've never seen a Vin Z before. Never. Right? But we do have an American sourced 2.4 liter four cylinder and a nine speed automatic. How does that work? Well, it's got the right shift pattern, so who cares? Yeah, it's, it doesn't matter what it has. It's Euro, that's why. <laughs> the front is very, very standard, honestly. It's just a strut-based front suspension. Everything's easily accessible here. Oil filter, pan, I mean, you don't have to take any access panels off. There's really not a ton of aero panels underneath to deal with. Uh, it's all stamped steel. And a lot of this, like, this bar here looks like you could probably bend it in half with a a rubber mallet and like one strike it there's you know again this for the price point of this car you, you know you're not going to get anything fancy what's in the middle scott evap canister i don't it doesn't look very easy to get to <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'll probably never go bad it's the ones you can't get to that go bad this thing looks like it's just glued up there Man, this thing is simple back here. I mean, beyond simple, it's just... There's no reason for it to be complicated. Why, so you can tack another 20 grand on and say we made it harder to make? But that might be good <clears throat> for somebody that's gonna buy this who's running a small business or, you know, looking just for a basic nice delivery. flower vehicle. shop. Yeah, or cupcake delivery, hot dog delivery. <laughs> I don't, what do you have delivered? Nothing. You don't have our food delivery? No, I only stream my, my deliveries come over the internet. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. As we get to the back. It's got the longest control arms ever. And this suspension in the back is unbelievably simple. I mean, it's like, they're like, oh, we need to come up with a suspension real quick that's easy to get to, take apart and manufacture. You have this center subframe uh, carrier that is like this long. I mean, it is so tiny. And the control arms, well, it's got eccentric bolts. That it does. Wow. But I mean, you could literally take this suspension apart in probably five minutes. When it's new. Well, right, before it rusts out, obviously. I mean, it is, it is basic, and it's actually strange to, to look at, and that's what I was saying, is like you look at some of these suspensions that they put together, and you have a damper on such a, a crazy angle here in the back. I think it's more than 45 degree angle. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like a, like a V-shaped V suspension. It's very, very strange looking when you, especially after looking at some of these multi-links. Yeah, your spring carrier. I mean, is this is... Another good thing is, yes, if you own this as a small business, it would be extremely easy to work on. I don't really see any, any drama here at all. What do we have here? A 2.4 multi-air four popper. Why does it have multi-air? Because it can get it from multiple places. Okay. 
like the air box through the intake. Yeah, and then when this breather hose cracks right here, it can suck air through there. So that's a, that's the secondary air induction. Yes. And then it has an intake manifold that leads to four channels. So there could that's... technically be four inlets of air. Regardless, we have a four-cylinder and a nine-speed automatic, as we mentioned. Uh, I'm not quite positive why you need a nine-speed automatic on a four-cylinder, but you have it here. But other than that, it's pretty basic under here. Nothing, nothing too crazy. You got your standard Chrysler four-cylinder. And what did you notice about this nice battery negative terminal? Quick disconnect. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Dude, we have to get a shot of it. Check out the wiper bottle mount. Come on this side. I wonder if it broke. Now that doesn't look like somebody, that looks like a factory job. That's a robot job. That's really weird. You know, the weird stuff you see when you start looking under the hood of vehicles. But overall, you know, I'm going to stand by the fact that if you're looking for a small business vehicle without having the complexities of getting an SUV loaded with crap well, what you about don't need. The Chevy has a version of this too. Yeah, they all do. So why don't you... You can't say this is a good one until you drive that no, one. No, I'm not saying it's a good or bad oh. one. I'm just saying it's an option for somebody that doesn't want to buy an SUV, doesn't want to pick up. You have an enclosed structure that's no nonsense in here. There's really no fluff. So Maybe you could put a 4x8 sheet of plywood on an angle like that? Yeah. That's more for flowers. No. That's it? Yep. Are you kidding me? No, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, oh man, that feels nice. I wish this had a metal floor. I'd have you drive me around. I'd put my feet up there and blindfold me. <laughs> Just slide around. You can jab my knee into that. And then you can always, you can charge back here. It's pretty simple. I like how it's got hydraulics or air shocks or whatever those things are. I finally broken away from Scott to get my hands on the ProMaster City. The sun's come out and the first thing you're going to notice when you start piloting this machine is how amazing the visibility is out of this front windshield. It's like sitting in front of your bay window in your mansion just looking out at the, the world before you. Now driving it, most people are not going to give two hoots about the driving experience. But let's take a look. We're gonna turn off the traction control. Not even gonna bother with manual because it's kind of pointless. But we have a nine speed automatic here. So let's see how it does in the turns. Some understeer. But mostly, this feels like a car. Uh, it really, essentially, it is a car chassis. This is not a truck. Uh, the suspension is pretty softly sprung. The point is, is if you're gonna buy this for like a work vehicle or just moving your, moving your stuff around, uh, it's a car driving experience. It's just kind of a softly sprung compact car for the most part. The steering feels actually pretty good. You have hydraulic power steering here. It's just not gonna send up any red flags. Now we're gonna put it in manual mode here just to test out the acceleration of this bad boy. Yeah. Uh, the manual mode does hold revs. It won't auto upshift for you, which is kind of a a treat, but for the most part, you're only going to use this manual mode when you need to control, uh, you know, when you need to downshift primarily. Ride quality. Well, it's not the best, honestly. It's, it's a little choppy. Uh, once you get up into the higher speeds above 45, 50, there's a lot of wind noise in here, which is to be expected. There's a lot of glass. This is not designed in any part to be a quiet riding experience. It's just get you from point A to B with your cargo strapped down and you're gonna be good. Acceleration is 
really surprisingly good out of the 2.4 liter. This is just a naturally aspirated motor, but again, it feels like a really peppy, compact car. This nine speed, uh, I don't really understand why I need a nine speed automatic in this car. It just it's always seems to be gear hunting. It's never really kind of in the gear that you particularly want, but again, you're not going to be driving this and <laughs> you're not going to be driving it in an aggressive manner. It's a pretty, pretty decent vehicle for what it is. I, I just don't see anybody that's going to buy this for this price point and have a lot of complaints about any of the drivability factors here from the steering feel to the braking to the acceleration uh, to the overall handling. I think the only thing people might be a little bit testy about is just maybe the road noise and the overall just kind of choppiness of the ride sometimes. Now it's time to pick up Turbowski. I promised him a race car experience and he's gonna get one. So I promised Scott a race experience and I kind of gypped him with the ProMaster. I told him we were going to be racing cars, but I guess he's got the next best thing here. What are you doing, Scott? Driving on the DRS. Why are you left foot braking? Because that's what a left foot's for. No, it's like ridiculous. It almost makes you sick. Really? Well, I got the monitor moving, the peripheral, peripheral vision out the fucking side windows. <laughs> I can't even make a lap. How's the uh, ride back there, Scott? It's horrendous. You said there's a lot of road noise? Yeah, I need some earplugs. How was your driving experience? Horrible. That's too bad. Yeah, we need to strap this thing down and try over. Well, so really, the ProMaster City, how would you rate the uh, overall uh, driver training program in it? Negative 10. Would you recommend this for a, a young driver? No, absolutely not. The interior. There's Typically, I do a, a separate segment for a vehicle, but for this car, it's so simple. There's not really a need to do that. Your ergonomics are super sound. Uh, the way that the steering wheel controls are laid out with Chrysler vehicles, you have actually your track selection on the back side of the steering wheel behind it and the volume selector behind. So you actually don't even have to move your hands off the wheel. You just you know, use your index finger and middle finger to adjust the volume or ring finger, whatever. Your overall menu controls for this, this is the fifth generation Uconnect system. Uh, the screen is laughably generic, but it gets the job done. It's, the, the quality of the display is not there. It's probably like a 320 by 240 resolution would be my guess. Uh, it's just not very bright. But the thing is, is it's not complicated. It's super quick and the mapping software works relatively well. Well, that's because it's a TomTom -Tom head unit. So uh, most people aren't gonna complain there. Your controls for this menu structure here are all also on the center stack, and there's just not a lot to configure. It's just the most basic thing you could imagine. Also, I don't know what people are gonna do, but this the side view mirrors are actually manually controlled with this little joystick. So if you're a younger person, you're probably not gonna figure out how to adjust them. Overall, I've enjoyed driving the ProMaster. It's better than I expected it would be. I mean, it's hard to take this seriously when you're doing a, you know, testing like we do. But, you know, I've said this before. If you own a business, a small business, you're looking to do delivery or transport of stuff without having to dump a ton of money on an SUV littered with crap that you don't need, or going to the full-blown commercial vehicle like a Sprinter or the bigger version of this that becomes a truck platform, that becomes expensive to maintain. This is just this generic car platform with a ton of space in the back. It's simple all over. You don't have a ton of electronic gadgets. You don't have power lift gates. You don't have power at really anything in here besides windows and power locks. It's just simple. 
and it's cheap. I think most people are gonna appreciate that in a, just the kind of an economy of cars that's just littered with so much nonsense. Yeah, overall, the, uh, the, the ProMaster city is just a real, a real treat to drive. <laughs> I'm looking for Matt Bellatini, Ferrari. Hey Matt, how are you? Good, good. I got Scott Turbowski here. Uh, we just want to let you know, we just want to find out when you're going to drop the La Ferrari off. Y yeah, he's got 14 followers on Twitter. Yeah, you should follow him. <laughs>